Good evening. Good evening, teacher. Hi, okay. Good evening. Hello. How are you? Fine, thank you. And you? <laughs> Doing great. Thank you very Hi. much. <laughs> thank you very much. Okay. Um, well, we're going to begin the class now. I'm just going to start. Well, I'm just going to share the screen with you. Um, I guess you can see it. Can you see the screen? There's a, you know, is the sky at night. So uh, just let me find the slide before we begin. Uh, okay, yeah, here. Okay, first thing, as usual, I'm going to call the attendance. So when you hear your name, please let me know, okay? Alejandro Jose Quintanilla. Present teacher. Thank you. Alicia Guadalupe Hernandez Romero. Present. Thank you. Ana Filomena Mendoza. Good evening, teacher. Present. Good evening. Thank you. Ana Yanira Mendoza. Ana Yanira Mendoza. Godoy. Andrea Geraldine Sanchez Resinos. Present teacher. Thank you. Okay. Um, Andrea Michelle Garcia Selva. Present teacher. Thank you. Blanca Marisol Vargas Esteves. Blanca Marisol Vargas Esteves. Boris Martin, Martin Salinas Quintanilla. I think Boris is here. Boris, ah. Here, teacher, here. Okay, thank you. Uh, Selina Yvette Gutierrez Osorio. Present. Thank you. We have a chat entry. Alicia Guadalupe. Okay, let's see, Alicia Guadalupe. All right. Okay, I get the message. Thank you, Alicia. Uh, Dennis Isaias Gomez Rodas. Good evening, everyone. Present. Okay, thank you. Wait. Okay. Daisy Carolina Rodriguez Mejia. Daisy Carolina Rodriguez Mejia. No. Eric Ernesto Linares Aguirre. Eric Ernesto Linares Aguirre. Erika Meidel Antonio Flores. Present teacher. Thank you. Francisco Alberto Lemus Guzmán. Good evening teacher and present. Thank you. Iris Regina Hernández Cuellar. Iris, Iris, tiene Iris tiene problemas para entrar, teacher. Ah, ok. Se está okay. intentando entrar, teacher. No le funciona el video. Ok, ok. Thank you. All right. Uh, Jenny Elizabeth Santillana Cortés. Thank you. José Eraibín Enríquez. Present, teacher. Thank you. Katia Graciela Juan de Candray. Good evening, teacher. Good evening. Present. Thank you. Maritza Isabel Mendez Aguirre. Daisy says present via chat. Okay, thank you, Daisy. Again, uh, also Blanca Marisol. Okay, I'm thank you. Teacher. Thank you very much. Okay. Teacher, I'm yes. Yanira Mendoza. Ana Yanira, okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. So, uh, Maritza Isabel Mendez. Maritza Isabel Mendez, no. Miguel Angel Quintanilla Tejada. Present teacher. Good evening. Thank you. Good evening. Nadia Isolina Rodriguez Ramirez. Present teacher. Thank you. Noemi Alicia Estrada de Valle. Present teacher. Thank you. 
Ronald Antonio Luna López. Present teacher. Thank you. Saúl Antonio Hernández Torres. I'm here, teacher. Thank you. Okay, just calling some names one more time. Er Eric Ernesto Linares Aguirre. Eric Ernesto Linares Aguirre. No. Iris Regina Hernández Cuellar. No. And Maritza Isabel Mendez Aguirre. Okay. I'm going to call the attendance one more time at the end of the class. Let's begin, everybody. Uh, welcome. This is Inglés Preavanzado, Módulo 1. And that's me, Ivan Doñan, at your service. This is session number four. Today is March the 2nd of 2023. 2023. Let's begin. Now, um, you had some homework, right, that we assigned yesterday. If you remember, we studied a list of words or expressions that you can use to state what you like, what you don't like, what makes you happy, what doesn't make you happy, what bothers you, what embarrasses you, etc., etc. So how do you feel about these situations? Complete the sentences with it clauses from the list. Then take turns reading your sentences with a partner. So what do you have? You have, I love it. Remember, you say, I love it. Means you really like it. You can say, I can't stand it. Que no lo soporto. Okay, o no soporto. Right, I can't stand it. It makes me happy. Okay, the next one is, it bothers me. Me molesta. It embarrasses me. Me avergüenza. It really upsets me. De verdad, me incomoda o me molesta. Me altera. I don't like it. Me gusta. It doesn't bother me. No me molesta. And I don't mind it. Me da igual. Okay, that's it. I don't mind it. No me molesta también. So um, what do you have? For this exercise, um, remember the idea was for you to do it and uh, you're going to have different opinions. Okay, that's the important thing. You're going to have different opinions just because uh, your opinion is different from your classmate doesn't mean the exercise is wrong. No, not really. It's just that we have different opinions. So what about number one? I need a volunteer to read the first sentence. Nadia. In my opinion, the number one is it makes me happy when someone gives me a compliment on my clothes. Okay, okay. So if somebody tells you, hey, Nadia, that's a, that's a nice, nice dress, for example. Ah, it makes you happy. Okay, that's good. So you can say, it makes me happy when someone gives me a compliment on my clothes. I want a second opinion on number one, please. Number one, again, but a different opinion. Let's see what you have. Erika. And then Boris. So Erika, num number one. Okay, mm -hmm. I love it when someone gives me a compliment on my clothes. I love it when someone gives me a compliment on my clothes. Okay, okay, very good. Yeah. Boris, number two. Okay. Uh, when people are directed and say what, what's on their mind, uh, I don't mind it. I don't mind it when people are directed and say what's on their mind. Okay, I don't mind it when people are direct and say what's on their mind. Okay, so you like honest people who say what they think. Yes. Okay, nice. Thank you, Boris. I need a second opinion for number two. Who can help me, please? Vamos, participemos. Solo es la tarea. Pueden elegir la que ustedes quieran en este caso. Alejandro Quintanilla, number two, please. I love it when people are direct and say what on their mind. Okay, I love it when people are direct and say what's on their mind. Okay, very good. Thank you, Alejandro. We continue with Noemi Alicia. What about number three, Noemi? Number three. Uh, I don't like it when someone correct my English in front of others. Híjole, pues yo no, no la voy a corregir si, si comete no, algún error. No, 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 dice, o sea, no me importa que me corrijan. Ah, ah, you said, I don't mind it. I don't mind it. 
Ah, I, I, then I misheard you. I, I thought you said, I don't <laughs> like it. Okay, sorry. So I don't uh -huh. mind it. Ah, uh -huh. okay, uh -huh. very good. I don't mind it when someone corrects my English in front of others. Okay, that, that's yeah. good. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Noemi, uh, Saul, the same. Number three, what's your opinion? Okay, my opinion, it doesn't bother me when someone, someone corrects my English in front of others. Uh, can you repeat it, please? Okay, it doesn't bother me when someone corrects my English in front of others. It doesn't bother me when someone corrects my English in front of others. Okay, similar to, that's similar to Noemi's opinion. Okay, very good. Thank you, Saul. What about number four? Who wants to try? Number four. Raise your hand, please. Jenny Elizabeth. I like, I love it. And support. Supportive. Okay, supportive. supportive. I love it supportive. when a friend is sensitive and supportive. Okay, very good. Thank yeah. you, Jenny. I love it when a friend is sensitive and supportive. Okay, great, great. What about number five? You need a volunteer for number five. Vamos, que sea alguien que no haya participado. Anímense. Vamos, okay. Who wants to participate? Let's participate. Katia Graciela, Juan de Candray, and then Boris Salinas. Okay, teacher. Um, uh, I don't like it when people throw trash on the ground. I don't like it when people throw trash on the ground. Okay, sounds yes. good. Totally, yeah. I, I, I shared the same opinion. Thank you. Uh, Boris, Thank you, what about... You're welcome. Okay, uh, Boris, what about number seven? <clears throat> Boris? Or not? Okay, uh, who, who can help me? Number seven? <coughs> okay, Maritza and then Ana Yanira. Number seven. Yes. I love it when a friend treats me to dinner. Ah, that was number six. I'm sorry, but yeah, number six. I love it when people, when a friend, I'm sorry, uh, treats me to dinner. Okay, that's good. I love it when a friend treats me to dinner. I think everybody answered the same thing. <laughs> okay, what is the meaning of treat, by the way? Does anybody know? Someone invite me? <laughs> uh huh. Okay. Uh, when another person pays for your consumption. Okay. That's the meaning of it. When when another person pays for your consumption, okay, they treat you. Okay. So you can say, for example, uh, like in this case, I love it when a friend treats me to dinner. Okay, you can also say it's my treat. Okay, this expression means I will pay. Okay, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you say, like, hey, let's eat some pupusas, and you say, ah, oh, but I don't have a lot of money. And then your friend says, ah, come on, it's my treat. It's ah, treat. okay, good, good, let's go. Okay, okay, I will pay. Okay, nice. <laughs> you can also say, it's when we're going to eat pupusa t-shirt. <laughs> uh, <laughs> okay. After the class. <laughs> nah, kidding. It's, your treat. Okay. it's my treat. No, no, no. I invite you, but I'm not treating anybody today. I don't have money. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> okay. You can also say it's on me, which also means I will pay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's on me. For example, you can say dinner is on me that means mm -hmm. i will pay for dinner mm -hmm. those expressions mm -hmm. okay so um who's next uh anayanita no, who, who answered the last one was it anayanita or me teacher yanira ah yanira you answered oh, or is it your turn right now Yes. Okay, number seven then. 
It makes me happy when I get phone calls on my birthday. It makes me happy when I get phone calls on my birthday. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, good. Thank you, Ana y Anita. Daisy Carolina, number eight, please. Okay, it uh, it doesn't bother me when a stranger asks me for money. It doesn't bother me when a stranger asks me for money. Okay, okay, that's good. Although I guess it depends on the amount of money. <laughs> okay, if it's a lot of money, yeah, it probably will bother me. So yeah, it doesn't bother me when a stranger asks me for money. If it's 25 cents, okay, no problem. So what about number nine? Thank you, Daisy. What about number nine? Who wants to participate? Raise your hand, please. Katia Graciela. Okay, teacher. I really, it really upset me when people call me late at night. It really upsets me when people call, call me late at night. Okay. And, oh, depend. Oh, depend uh -huh. the person. I love it when people okay. call me late at night. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> okay. So if it's from work, you hate it. Yes, teacher. Okay. Okay. <laughs> All right. But if it's a friend, you love it. Yes, teacher. Uh huh. Well, in my case, in my case, uh, it bothers me when people call me late at night. It doesn't matter the circumstances. <laughs> okay, if they call me okay, after teacher. nine nine p.m., I'm like, ah, I don't want to answer. <laughs> okay, well, thank you for your participation. Okay, you're welcome, teacher. What about number ten? Who wants to participate? Noemi. I don't, I don't mind if when teachers are temperamental. I don't mind it when teachers are temperamental. Okay. In my case, I don't like it when teachers are temperamental. <laughs> I'm a teacher, yeah. so I, I try not to be temperamental. I try to be nice and, you know, I try to be cool. <laughs> You're very nice. Okay. You're thank you nice <laughs> thank you so yeah you have that you say for example in your case you say i don't mind it when teachers are temperamental i mean you can take temperamental character so uh okay thank you everybody for your participation now you can see here that there are many different ways of uh you know completing this exercise and everybody has a different opinion so all opinions are valid right here so um I just want you to, uh, maybe you can repeat in your house. Uh, you don't need to activate the microphone. No, you can do it in your house, in the privacy of your home. I'm just going to read the uh, phrases so you can listen to them and repeat. But you repeat in your house, okay? Don't activate your microphone. It's just for you. So, I love it. I can't stand it. It makes me happy. It bothers me. It embarrasses me. It really upsets me. I don't like it. It doesn't bother me. I don't mind it. Okay? Those are the expressions right there. Okay, let us continue. And now we have this, which is uh, section 1.12, reading the amazing world of apps. Okay, now everybody has a phone. Okay, in the phone you have apps or applications. Also, uh, the programs that you install in a computer are called applications, okay, or simply apps, but most commonly you use them on your phone. So what are we going to do? Well, there's a video right here, but there's a text, okay, and I want you to help me read the text. I'm going to need four volunteers, okay, four volunteers to read this. Nadia, Dennis, I need two more, Boris and Saul. Okay, so Nadia, I want you to read paragraph one. Dennis, you will help me read paragraph two. Uh, Boris, you will help me read paragraph three. And Saul, paragraph four. So Nadia, you begin, please. Okay. In 2010, the American Dialect Society Society Choice, Society Choice App as the word of the year. App is short for application. It's a program for an electronic device like a smartphone or tablet computer. There are more than 40, 25,000. 425,000. 
425,000 apps that can be downloaded for entertainment, shopping, sport, scores, and anything else. Do you mind be interesting? You might be interested in. Okay, I'm going to read it now. Thank you, Nadia. I'm going to read the first paragraph. Uh, in 2010 or 2010, the American Dialect Society chose app as the word of the year. App is short for application. It is a program for an electronic device like a smartphone or a tablet computer. There are more than 425,000 apps that can be downloaded for entertainment, shopping, sports scores, and anything else you might be interested in. So, Dennis, second paragraph, please. Apps are so popular because they can be used almost anywhere, commuting on a bus, waiting oh, in a commuters. doctor's office. Sorry, commuting. Commuting, commuting mm -hmm. on a bus, waiting in a doctor's office, or hanging out at the mall. And all you need is your smartphone. You don't need to log into your computer or into a website. You don't have to set up your video game console you don't even need a Wi-Fi connection. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Apps are so popular because they can be used almost anywhere. Commuting on a bus, that means when you go to work, commuting on a bus, waiting in a doctor's office, or hanging out at the mall. And all you need is your smartphone. You don't need to log on into your computer or into a website. You don't have to set up your video game console. You don't even need a Wi-Fi connection. You can use mobile data. Thank you. Uh, Dennis, what about, uh, well, Boris was raising his hand just a moment before. Boris, do you still want to yeah. read or? Yes, I want. OK, OK. Uh, most smartphone can hold hundreds of apps. Uh, and you can use more than one app at a time. For instance, you can use a navigation app to find a new restaurant, a dining app to look at the restaurant menu, and a weather forecast app to decide what to wear to the restaurant all at the same time. Thank you very much. I apologize. I am very tired today. So if I'm yawning a little bit, <laughs> it's because I'm very tired. But OK, here we are. OK, so um, thank you, Boris. I'm going to read it. Most, most smartphones can hold hundreds of apps. And you can use more than one app at a time. For instance, you can use a navigation app to find a new restaurant. I did this a few weeks ago, by the way. No le digo cuál porque le estaría haciendo publicidad algo y no puedo hacer eso tampoco en una clase. But yeah, um, I, I did this. I, I used my phone and I used uh, Google Maps to find a restaurant. It was a pizza restaurant. Very good. Very nice. I will highly recommend it. So again, right? For instance, you can use a navigation app to find a new restaurant, a dining app, or look at the restaurant's menu and the weather forecast app to decide what to wear to the restaurant all at the same time. And finally, we have uh, Saul, Saul Antonio Hernandez. Last paragraph. Saul? So will Antonio, no? Okay, uh, maybe Ana Yanira, can you help me read it? Sorry, coach. Sorry, yes. teacher. I was, was having a problem with my phone. Okay, okay. All right. Okay, okay. so Ana, you, you go next. Okay, so um, let's see, Saul. Okay, uh, um, one of the most popular apps, Angry Bears, has been downloaded by more than 50 million people. In 2010, this ad was played uh, 200 million minutes daily by app user, or 1.2 billion hours a year. Uh, the Apple Store began, began selling apps in 2008 with nearly 1 million sold. In 2010, nearly, nearly 3 billion apps were sold and at an average price of $2.13. Not only, no, not only are are apps popular. They are also profitable. Profitable. Profit profitable. Profitable. That means that they make money. Okay. 
So um, yeah, thank you, Saul. I'm going to read it. One of the most popular apps, Angry Birds, has been downloaded by more than 50 million people. In 2010, this app was played 200 million minutes daily by app users, or 1.2 billion hours a year. The Apple Store began selling apps in 2008 with nearly 1 billion sold. In 2010, nearly 3 billion apps were sold at an average price of $2.13. You just need to multiply that. It's a lot of money. Not only are apps popular, they're also profitable. That means they make money okay, for the creators, for the owners. So uh, after reading this text, okay, we're going to go over this. Uh, this is the amazing word of apps. This is uh, the knowledge check that you can find at the end of the unit. So instructions based on the article on apps, section 1.12, answer the following question. So according to the article, what are some common uses of apps? Who knows the find answer? A new find a new restaurant. Yeah, okay. Uh, Jenny? And, uh, uh, okay, uh, thank you, Boris. Uh, then you have uh, Jenny, then Anna Filomena, and then Erika. Okay, so Jenny, what else? Uh, I am in restaurant, uh, look at the restaurant menu. Look at the restaurant's menu, that is correct. Thank you, Anna Filomena. What else? Check the weather. Check the weather, that's right. Very good. Okay, Erika Maydel, you go for the next one. Am I pronouncing your name correctly? Is it Maydel or Maydel? Maidel. Maidel. Okay. Sorry. I apologize. So, Erika Maidel. Okay. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Number two, at the time in which the article was written, what was true about the app Angry Birds? Um, at the time we sold food, um, uh, it sold for. I know, I know. At the time in the in which the article was written and was true about the, it had been downloaded by more than fifty million people. The first one. It had been downloaded by more than fifty million people. That is <laughs> right. Thank you, Erika. Okay. Maidel. <laughs> okay. Yes. <laughs> yes. Okay. All right, good. Uh number three, who knows the answer? <clears throat> Ana Filomena, according to the article, why are apps so popular? Apps are popular because they can be used almost anywhere. Apps are popular. One. Yeah, number one, because they can be used almost anywhere. That's correct. Very good. And that's the end of the first part. Now we're going to start part two. Let me close this. Let's save. And now second part. Now, this unit is a little bit simpler than the other one, so uh, we're not going to take that long. So again, uh, session number four, March 2nd. Everybody, take a look. Career moves, that's the section, second section. So you have best jobs based on personality types, okay? There are personality types right here. Best job based on personality types. So um, because of the time, because we don't have much, I'm going to read it. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit. Artistic types, like working with designs and patterns. Patrones, right? Again, artistic types, like working with designs and patterns. Some examples of jobs are clothing designer and architect. What about this one? Investigative types, like figuring out problems, solving problems. For example, a veterinarian is an investigative type. A pharmacist, someone who works in a drug drugstore, okay, is another example of an investigative type. Then you have conventional types like following instructions and routines. Examples include air traffic controller, you know, those people who work at the airport, and uh, accountant, right, in a company, the guys that you know, count the money and also uh, basically have a registry of all, all uh, transactions. So the next one is realistic types, like working outside with real world materials. 
Okay, they like to go out and work outside. So example, restaurant cook and bus driver. What about this one? Enterprising types like leading people and making decisions. They are the leaders. Like flight attendant is an example of an enterprising type and lawyer. And finally, you have social types like working with other people. For example, high school coach, entrenador de bachillerato, right? High school coach and child care worker. So there you go. Those are the personality types uh, according to the information that you have in the book. So again, there are artistic types, investigative types, conventional types, realistic types, enterprising types, social types. Okay, I have a question just for those who want to participate. What personality type do you think you are? Mm -hmm. What personality type do you think you are? Dennis. Uh, I think uh, I have uh, two types of personalities. Okay. Uh, I have artist types and social types. Artistic type and social type. Okay, artistic and social. So you like working with designs and patterns and you like working with other people. Okay, that's that's nice. Okay, uh, a question, Dennis. Uh, do, do, uh, where do you work? Uh, currently, I'm not working, but uh, uh -huh. I was studying social work and okay. I like... And I like to sing. Okay. Okay. Very good. Okay. Nice. Nadia and then Nana Yanira. So, what type are you? In my case, uh, my personality types is investigative. Investigative type. Okay. All right. Yes. Okay. Very good. And and uh, okay. Thank you, Nadia. Very nice. What about Anna Yanira? Um, for me, teacher. Mm -hmm. uh, the enterprise types. Enterprising type. Okay, nice. Okay, you 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 want to be a, you like to be a leader. Yes, I okay. am a lawyer. Teacher. You're a lawyer. Okay, great. Exactly. You have this. You have this example right here. Okay, a lawyer. Okay, great. Very good. Uh, because of the time, we're going to move on. So the next part is perspectives, career debate. Okay, there are. Three, well, there are four conversations right here, more like four um, debates, we can call them, in which two people are presenting their points of view. So I need two volunteers to read the first conversation, please. Let's see, Katia Graciela and Nadia Isolina. Okay, Katia, please. Okay, teacher. Designing clothes is not a man's job. Women are much more fascinated by fashion. By fashion. Uh -huh. Sorry. Good. It's plural, so you say women. Right? Women, yes, teacher. Sorry. Sorry, no, teacher. No, no problem. No problem. Don't worry. So designing clothes is not a man's job, this person says. Women are much more fascinated by fashion. And what is the reply? Nadia. No, so so yeah. many great clothing yeah. designer are men. Just look at Calvin Klein. Yeah, that's right. The other person says not so. Many great clothing designers are men. Just look at Calvin Klein. Okay, thank you very much. So, um, what about the second conversation? I need two volunteers, two different people, please. I want more people to participate. Boris, okay, and Selena Ivet. Okay, I would love to fly all the time. Being a flight attendant sounds exciting. I would love to fly all the time. Being a flight attendant sounds exciting. Okay, so Selena, what does the other person reply? Thank you. I don't think so. Fly attendants get tired of traveling. They have to be away from their families all the time. Mm -hmm. She says, I don't think so. Flight attendants get tired of traveling. They have to be away from their families all the time. I think it's true. I, I once met a person who was a flight attendant and she said that it was very tiring. 
very, very tiring. Okay, nice. So what's next? I need two volunteers. It is Regina and another person, please. Erika. Maidel. <laughs> okay, so um, it is. I like to work for a newspaper, but writing a grossed column seems like an awful job. Yeah, I'd like to work for a newspaper, but writing a gossip column seems to seems like an awful job. A gossip column is verdad la columna de los chismes, verdad? Más que todo de la farándula. So, writing a gossip column seems like an awful an awful job. What about the other person? What does the other person say? Erica? I don't agree. Finding out about famous people's lives could be really fun. Yeah. The other person says, I don't agree. Finding out about famous people's lives could be really fun. Okay, cool. And the last one, two more people. I need two people who haven't participated. Please. Veamos, dos que no hayan leído. Okay, uh, we have uh, Noemi and Dennis. Have a chat entry before that. Uh, chambres. Yeah, that's okay. gossip. Okay, so Noemi. Okay. I enjoy working with animals. I think being a veterinarian would be uh, rewarding. Yeah, I've enjoyed working with animals. I think being a veterinarian will be rewarding. Okay, it feels good. And Dennis? I'm not for sure. Animals can be very unpredictable. Getting beaten by a dog would be scary. Mm -hmm. He says, I'm not sure. Animals can be very unpredictable. Getting bitten by a dog will be scary. Okay. So you have some opinions, and uh, these opinions reflect the piece of grammar that we're going to study now. So lesson objective, by the end of this class, participants will learn how to use gerund phrases as subjects and objects. How does it work? Simple. Take a look. These are gerund phrases as subjects. This means that you can use a verb at the beginning of a sentence. But if you use a verb at the beginning of a sentence, if you use a verb as the subject of a sentence, then you have to use the ing form. This is called a gerund. Examples. Designing clothes is not a man's job. Being a flight attendant sounds exciting. Writing a gossip column could be fun. Directing a TV show would be interesting. So that's the idea. Again, remember, you can begin a sentence with a verb. Okay? You can begin the sentence with a verb. A verb can also be the subject of a sentence. But if that's the case, you have to use the gerund form. And the gerund form is the verb in ing. Designing clothes is not a man's job. Being a flight attendant sounds exciting. Writing a gossip column could be fun. Directing a TV show will be interesting. You can also use gerunds or gerund phrases as objects. How does it work? Normally, they go after certain verbs and also after prepositions, like this. He wouldn't like being a fashion designer. Okay, so um, it's going to put it here. Normally, after the verb like, you use a gerund. For example, you say, I like going to the beach. Uh, I would like, well, what I would like, probably not. You say, I like, you say, she likes. Okay, again, the verb like. Uh, spending time with her parents. So, I like going to the beach. She likes, sorry, spending time with her parents. So, that's the idea. Take a look. After the verb like, you use a gerund. You use the ing form of the verb, okay? Another example, he would enjoy uh, being a flight attendant. 
enjoy. That's another one. Okay. After the verb enjoy, you use a gerund. Nadia. Teacher, I have a question. Mm -hmm. When we 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 can use like or likes, what is the difference? Ah, the difference between like and likes. This is present simple. In present simple affirmative form, take a look. You use the subjects I, you, we, and they. With them, you have to use the verb in base form, like, like, go, do, study, work, etc. But when the subject is he, she, or it, then it's a different story. You have to use the verb in a different way. You use likes, goes, does, studies, works, etc. So, for a better view. It goes like that. Affirmative sentences, when the subject is he, she, or it, then the verb changes. Like in this case, she likes spending time with her parents. Boris. Yes, teacher. Uh, well, I understand that we can use a kind of a uh, gerund when the birds are a kind of feeling not necessarily not necessarily because uh, let's see for example when you say uh in the book they give you they give it they give it to you as an example he wouldn't like being a fashion designer but normally normally when you use would or wouldn't and then like you have to use the two infinitive form for example I can say, I like spending, uh, going to the beach. She likes spending time to, with her parents. But normally when you use would, for example, I would like, then you have to use a to infinitive, to go. You don't say I would like going, but I would like to go to the beach. Again, in the book, they give you an example using would and then ing, but normally you use a to infinitive. So yeah, in this case, like expresses a feeling or an opinion about something. That means your likes or dislikes, but it doesn't necessarily have to be followed by a gerund. Okay, thank you. So, okay. Um, what about the next one? She'd be good at writing a gossip column. Okay, this is another one. I'm going to delete this. Okay, so you use preposition. plus a gerund. That's another one. For example, you have, she would be good at writing a gossip column. She would be good at. At is a preposition. So after prepositions, also you have to use gerunds. So she would be good at writing, sorry, writing a gossip column. Okay. You can also say good at, bad at, etc. You can say um, I am bad at singing. Okay. At is another, well, it's a preposition. So you have to use a gerund after a preposition. Mm -hmm. You can say I am sorry for uh, breaking your favorite I'm sorry for breaking your favorite cup. For is a preposition, so you have to use a gerund, ing for. So that's the rule. Prepositions are followed by gerunds. Okay. And then also you have, they would love directing a TV show. Okay, after love, you can also use ing forms. So those are gerund phrases of subjects in gerund phrases as objects, okay? Just, uh, again, you can use a gerund at the beginning of a sentence if it's the subject, 
designing clothes is not a man's job. And also you can use it as objects after certain verbs and after prepositions. So what are we going to do here? Look at the gerund phrases in column A, write your opinion of each job by choosing information from column B and C, then add two more gerund phrases and write similar sentences. So you have this, working as an, act, as an architect, and this depends, totally depends on your opinion. Okay, you can say working as an act, uh, an architect. Si ya de por sí usted es arquitecto, ¿verdad? puede ser que ya sea arquitecto. Entonces, working as an act architect is fantastic or is fascinating. Okay, digamos, ¿quién me dijo que era abogado? ¿Quién me dijo abogada? I forgot. Was it? Me Ana, Ana Yanira. Yeah. Okay, thank you, Yanira. So, because you're a lawyer, you can say working as a lawyer is interesting. Working as a lawyer is, you can probably say pretty difficult, okay? Or working as a lawyer is very challenging. Or working as a lawyer is really rewarding. So, what I want you to see here is that you can use the gerund at the beginning. Now, uh, of course, because you have different opinions, you can use a totally different verb. For example, working as an architect, I am not an architect, but I have an opinion about it. I can say working as an architect seems, parece, okay, como no soy, no puedo asegurarlo, pero sí puedo verlo, no? So working as an architect seems uh, very challenging, okay, in my opinion, but this is only my opinion. You can use different verbs, sounds, suena, ¿verdad? must be, debe ser. Could be, puede ser, would be, sería. And then you have some adjectives, awful, just terrible, scary, fascinating, fantastic, pretty difficult, kind of boring, okay? Really rewarding and very challenging. So I want you to go with number two. I just want you to tell me your opinion. This is very similar to what we did at the beginning of the class. So. Taking care of children, who can tell me? Ana Filomena. Taking care of children sounds scary. <laughs> Taking <laughs> care of children sounds scary. Do you have children, Ana? No, thank no. God. No, okay, <laughs> thank God, oh my God. <laughs> okay, all right, all right. No, oh, taking care of children is fabulous. It's fantastic. <laughs> It's expensive also. Okay, uh, mm -hmm. Daisy. How about you, Daisy? Number three, winning the lottery. Okay, winning the lottery is, sounds fantastic. Winning the lottery sounds fantastic. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, I will say winning the lottery must be, I don't know, must fantastic, be. right? Incredible. Okay, good. Thank you very much. Boris Salinas, number four, conducting an orchestra. Conducting uh, an orchestra uh, must be pretty difficult. Conducting an orchestra must be pretty difficult. Imagine yourself, okay? Conducting an orchestra must be pretty difficult. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, what about number five? Working on a movie set. Who wants to participate? Katia Graciela, Juan de Candray. Okay, teacher, working uh, on a movie set sounds fascinating. Working on a movie set sounds fascinating. Okay, great. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Very <laughs> nice. Okay, great. What about number six? Making a living as an artist, o sea, ganarse la vida como artista. Making a living as an artist. Who wants to participate? Uh -huh. Maritza. And then Filomena and then Erika. Uh -huh. So Maritza. Making a living as an artist sounds fascinating. Okay, making a living as an artist sounds fascinating. Okay, that's good. That's good. Uh, okay. And also, it, it, it is fascinating. Art is fascinating. The only problem with art is that depends on the country. I mean, your experience will, will vary depending on the country. For example, in El Salvador, 
making a living as an artist uh, is pretty very, difficult. Very, pretty difficult, very challenging. Okay, it's possible. But it's very awful. Very awful. He's a well, probably not awful, right? But difficult. I will say, very difficult. In other countries, you know, making a living as an artist is is a lot easier. So we have no a chat entry. Is a profit in his land. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Nobody is a profit in his land. Nobody's a profit in land. Yeah, totally. In a different country, you go, you, you do wonders. So, yeah, making a living as an artist must be very challenging, Daisy says. Okay, yeah, mm -hmm. must be challenging, but beautiful. It's nice. Artist is very cool. So, what about number seven? Uh, writing for a newspaper, Ana Filomena. Writing for a newspaper could be kind of boring. Writing for a newspaper could be kind of boring. Okay, depending. Uh, if you like to write, yeah, maybe it's not boring, okay? But if you don't like to write, yeah, it could be kind of boring. Opinions, okay, nice. Mm -hmm. Erika, Erika Maidel. Mm -hmm. Retiring at age 40 <laughs> sounds fantastic. <laughs> yes, retiring <laughs> at age 40 sounds fantastic. Yeah. Okay, in three years, I could retire. Okay, so re retiring at age now that two and a half years, two and a half years, I could be retiring. So retiring yeah. at age forty, okay, will be fantastic. Okay, yeah. absolutely, I agree. <laughs> okay. Hey, excuse me, teacher. What's the meaning of rewarding? Rewarding. Um, recompensador. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's the meaning of rewarding. Normally, because you feel you feel good, you feel like ah, this job is good, good for me, good for the world, good for society. Yeah, I feel proud of this job that I do. Okay, so um, there you go. You're using uh, gerunds as subjects. Let's continue. What about this? This is the knowledge check 2.4 that you find in the platform. By this time, you should have worked on this. Okay, so we're going to check answers. What are you going to do? You just need to unscramble the sentences and put the words in the right order. So the first one is very challenging. Taking care of children must be. So what do you have here? Erika. Mm -hmm. Taking care of children must be very challenging. Taking care of children must wait. Okay, taking care of children must be very challenging. That is correct. Okay, good. What about number two, Ana Yanira, and then Alejandro? Um, working on a movie set sounds fascinating. Working on a movie set sounds fascinating. Okay, that is correct. Thank you very much. Alejandro Quintanilla, number three. Making a living as an artist could be pretty difficult. Making a living as an artist could be pretty difficult. Okay, thank you. That's correct. And Daisy Carolina, number four, please. Working as an architect sounds interesting. Working as an architect sounds interesting. That is correct. Okay, very good. Time flies. It's 8.54. You have to hurry. We don't have much time. So uh, let's continue. By the end of this class, this is the objective 2.5. By the end of this class, you will learn how to use adjectives and nouns to make comparisons. Let's take a look. But first, there's a conversation. I'm going to zoom in. I need two volunteers to read this. I need someone to play Tracy and someone to play Mark. So Daisy, you can play Tracy. And Katya, you can play Mark, OK? All right. OK. Guess what? I've found a summer job. That's great. Anything interesting? Yes. Working at an um, amusement park. Amusement park. Amusement park. Mm -hmm. Wow, that sounds fantastic. So how do you find anything? Not in yet, but I have a couple of leads. 
One is working as an intern for a record company mostly answering phones or I can get an escaping job again. Being an intern sounds more interesting than landscaping. You'd have better hours and it's probably not as much work. Yeah, but a landscaper is more than an intern and you get a great, a great tan. A great tan. <laughs> okay. A great tan. Thank you very much. So very what do you have? Time. Uh, Tracy says, guess what? I have found a summer job. Mark says, that's great. Anything interesting? Tracy says, yes, working at the amusement park. Mark says, wow, that sounds fantastic. Tracy says, so have you found anything? Mark says, nothing yet, but I have a couple of leads. One is working as an intern for a record company, mostly answering phones. Or I can get a landscaping job again, like in the picture. This is landscaping. Okay, this is landscaping. Basically, it's making you know the landscape beautiful and presentable. Okay, um, Tracy says being an intern sounds more interesting than landscaping. You would have better hours, and it's probably not as much work. And Mark says, yeah, but a landscaper earns more than an intern, and you girl, you get a great tan. Before we continue, do you have any questions about the vocabulary or the expressions in this conversation? Uh, what's mean tan, teacher? A tan is what happens when you go to the beach, for example, and your skin turns darker. That's a oh. tan. Uh huh. If oh. you go out in the sun for too long, your skin it gets darker. That happens, especially when you go to the beach. Un bronceado, right? That's the word. Okay, any other questions about the vocabulary? Teacher, uh, yes. the meaning, the meaning um, uh, amusement. Uh, an intern. Uh, the meaning, the amusement park, amusement. Ah, amusement park. Um, for example, let's see. Uh, amusement park is un parque de diversiones. That's an amusement park. The same. Mm -hmm. Amusement okay. park. Yeah, okay. totally. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions? Alejandro or Ana Yanira, no sé si tienen pregunta o dejaron la manita levantada. I got one more. <laughs> okay, Boris. I'm sorry. Uh, landscaping is like cut the grass. That's one of the functions let's say, but basically a landscaping position means that, okay, you do many things, let's say, uh, to make, you know, a place look beautiful and presentable, okay? For example, you can take care of the flora and the fauna. Um, you can do gardening, okay? You can also grow plants in, you know, uh, strategic positions so that it looks beautiful and presentable, okay? Basically, it's creating a landscape that looks beautiful. That's landscaping. Mm -hmm. Sounds like a difficult job, to be honest. Okay, not a job for me, definitely. Okay. Um, any other questions about the vocabulary? Teacher. Yes. Dennis has a question. Will Dennis. Be... Who? Dennis. I have the same question, but uh, you ah. already answered it. Ah, okay. Uh, about about uh, about landscaping. Lane, landscaping. Okay, yeah. landscaping. Okay, good. Um, I have another question, but this question is for you, everybody. What about the word intern? What's an intern? Teacher, I have a question. Yes, Francisco. Well, two questions, well. Two questions. What is okay. guess, guess what? What is the should you translate in Spanish? Um, vain. Where is it? Uh, the third uh, letter, uh, guess what? what ah, is guess the, what? The uh -huh, yes. Guess what? Adina que, right? Oh. Guess the, what? Um, Bain? Where is it? Uh, Tracy, Bain, and uh, Inter-Saumar. Uh, inter 
what is the um, translated in Spanish pain? You mean here, being? Yeah, being. Sorry, sorry. Ah, uh, being yes. is the gerund mm -hmm. form of the verb be. Oh, okay, okay. Ah, uh, is the Thank ing form. Uh huh. Okay, thanks, teacher. <laughs> okay, you're welcome. Okay, but nobody has answered my question. What about this one? What is the meaning of intern? Me, uh huh. Maybe someone do the practice. Yeah, basically, it's, uh huh. University, I don't know. School. Okay. Uh, like a in, exactly. An intern is someone who works at the company but doesn't earn any money. It's just earning experience, and in the future, supposedly, okay, they get hired. Okay, the company says, okay, here's your contract. They sign the contract and they start working and they get money. That's an intern. Okay, un pasante. Okay, that's pretty nice. What time is it? Nine one. Wow, time's over. I guess we'll have to continue next time. But um, we're just going to start this very quickly. It's the grammar focus. Comparisons. Comparisons with adjectives. You can use comparisons with adjectives like this. More interesting than. Less interesting than is the opposite. Okay, this is more interesting, less interesting. Is harder than, okay, with a short adjective. And it's not as hard as, no es tan difícil como tal cosa. Okay, so it's not as hard as. You can use comparisons with nouns also. You say, this place has better hours than or has worse hours than. Blah, 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 isn't as much work as, as tanto trabajo como, and blah, 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 has more education than. You're using comparatives with nouns. What about comparatives with verbs? You say, Fulano earns more than Sutano. Sutano earns less than Fulano. Okay, then you compare it to people if this person earns as much as this other person. Again, you compare to more people. This person doesn't earn as much as this other person. No gana tanto como el otro. And with past participles, you can say, this job is better paid than. Es mejor pagado que el otro. You can say, this job isn't as well paid as. No es tan bien pagado como, right? And uh, you can say, this, this, and that is better educated than, and then you make another comparison. We're going to go deeper into this topic next week because time is over now. We have to finish the class. It's been an hour. So um, if you can, I want you to complete this part, which is knowledge check 2.8. Que de hecho ya tendría que estar completo, ¿verdad? Esta parte. Porque ya tenemos que ir terminando la sección 2. Igual, por favor, trabajenlo. This is 2.8. And please, finish the rest of the section, section number two. Oops, I was showing the answers. So um, again, uh, we're going to check this in more detail next week. And for now, I just need to call the attendance one more time, and then we'll finish the class. So um, two people. Eric Ernesto Linares Aguirre. Is Eric here? Eric, Eric is not here. Okay. And, uh, okay. Um, finally, we have Iris Regina Hernandez Cuellar. Hi. Hi. He's here. Okay, okay. I have the problem with my computer. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Your attendance yeah. is registered. Okay, yeah. everybody. Thank you very much. This was the first week. So remember today, today's Thursday, right? Yeah, it is Thursday. So remember, no class tomorrow. Okay, it's Friday. Uh, chat entry here. No, Alejandro is asking, will there be a class tomorrow? The answer is no, no class tomorrow. Okay, we'll see each other on Monday. So have a great weekend and please complete the unit. Acuérdense, tienen que completar la sección 1 y la sección 2, ¿verdad? Porque eso... Eh, creo que mañana automáticamente todo lo que hayan hecho pasa, verdad, así que hay que haberlo completado thank you very much, okay, have a great night and see you Monday thank, thank you teacher have a good weekend teacher bye guys bye
Bye, Bye everybody. Bye. Bye. Bye.